mind, I think that Starmer is still in prey to the idea um, that if you talk nicely to the European Union, um, it will be possible to get substantial changes to the TCA, the Tra Trade and Cooperation Agreement, which I, I, I simply think is, is, is fantasy. And I think he also has, as many um, rejoiners, too many rejoiners in this country have, the, the idea that we can edge ourselves back into the European Union, that we can align with this, we can be part of this programme, we can cooperate with the European Union on that. And then eventually one day by a process of osmosis, uh, we'll wake up pretty well in the European Union anyway. Hello, I'm John Stevens. I'm the chair of the Federal Trust. And I'm talking once again to Brendan Donnelly about events relating to Brexit and Britain's relationship with the European Union. Brendan, there's been quite a lot of excitement of late, uh, linked perhaps to Keir Starmer's uh, trips to the continent and uh, the King and Queen state visit to France, that about a proposal that has emerged from the German and French government circles about a possible multi-tiered Europe that might accommodate at some stage the UK. What is the substance of this? Well, there was a report, an academic report, as you imply, uh, commissioned by the French and German governments about the future governance of the European Union. And it's not something that's been adopted yet. And it's something that may never be adopted. It contains a number of radical proposals. But one of them is, as you say, for tiered membership of uh, of European institutions. There would be a, a hard core, there would be the present European Union, there would be associate membership, and then there would be the European political community. In passing, um, the authors of this report mentioned the possibility that the United Kingdom might want at some stage to become a, an associate member. That would be based essentially on, on membership of the internal market. Uh, but it was very much a, a passing reference in a, a, a speculative ac academic document. There was no sense of a, a, an offer from the French and Germans to the British to do anything or refrain from doing anything. When you say a passing reference, I think you're uh, correct in saying that it was five or six words out of 80 pages. That yes, it was, because they were saying that the Swiss and, um, and perhaps the Norwegians would be obvious candidates for this associate membership, um, and even the United Kingdom, they said, and, and that's a single reference. Um, it can't be stressed too much that um, this isn't a, a document in any sense addressed to the United Kingdom. It's an internal document within the European Union of how can the European Union be better governed in future, in particular in the light of the probable membership of Ukraine. So why has there been so much uh, excitement about this in the British media? I mean, in sharp contrast to the continental uh, European media, which um, doesn't seem to have mentioned it at all, as far as I can see, looking at the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung and Figaro and the rest. Well, I think that there is a, a, an incapacity in the United Kingdom often to understand the way the European Union works, uh, an incapacity to, to, to understand that uh, a, a, a think tank um, putting forward proposals uh, is something quite different to a final decision of the European Council. Uh, there's a, a, an attempt to, to conflate all foreign sources of opinion and and information with each other. If a couple of um, British, of, of, of German and, and French academics have put forward some proposal, well, Macron's put it forward. Um, uh, it's come from the Commission, the European Parliament in Dorset. There's this uh, idea that, that the European Union is a single blob uh, and anything that comes from it is of equal validity. That That is a problem. But there's also the narcissism of it. It's the idea that um, people in Brussels and throughout the European capitals um, sit around um, thinking how they can get the, Europe, the United Kingdom back into the European Union. Um, that certainly isn't their view. I'm not saying that uh, in the right circumstances that the United Kingdom won't rejoin the European Union. I, I, I think it will. Um, but it's not because people are, are sitting around plotting to make it happen in, 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 in Italy and in Brussels and, uh, and in Paris. Uh, one final point I'd make it in, in that context is that this initial uh, basic misunderstanding of the way the European Union works and its interest or lack of interest in the United Kingdom immediately 
of joining the, the European Union, um, is then taken up and recycled for the British political debate, which adds a, a further layer of, of, of confusion and, uh, and misconceptions, um, where people uh, have their own attitudes, legitimate attitudes towards the European Union, and they interpret um, what's happening in the European Union exclusively um, on the on the basis of that agenda. So how is this being recycled in the domestic debate about Brexit? Well, those who want the United Kingdom to diverge as far as possible from the European Union um, are eager to present this uh, as a, 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 a Machiavellian plot uh, in order to lure the United Kingdom back into the single market and then to the European Union. For reasons I've explained, um, I don't think that's true at all. But then there's a, an equal and opposite misunderstanding, which is that those people who would like um, the United Kingdom to rejoin the single market uh, think that this is a, a, a way back into the single market. Uh, it should be stressed, of course, that the authors of this report stress uh, that uh, it would be on the basis of a financial contribution to the European budget, uh, that if associate members did become members of the internal market, they wouldn't have um, decision-making powers and they would be subject to the European Court of Justice. Um, so all those things um, are regarded by people like Starmer uh, as being barriers to the United Kingdom's joining the single market. Um, and that uh, will continue to be the situation. So, Brendan, could it ever make sense for the UK to become a an associate member of the European Union? Well, I don't think so on the basis of particularly of the, the terms that are set out in this in the in this report. Uh, it's the one thing I do agree with the Eurosceptics about, that it makes no sense to uh, go back into the internal market, um, having no decision making powers uh, on worse terms than we had when we left the European Union. That that is one area where 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 I think the analyses converge. Unless joining the single market is going to be a, a direct and specific precursor to rejoining the European Union as a whole, uh, I, I don't think it, it makes sense for us simply to be or aspire to be in the internal market. It's also a question of, of identity. It's the 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 sense that we're only a half-hearted member of the European Union. We're on the fringes of Europe. Um, we are willing to be partially associated with Europe, with Europe, but not of it. Uh, I, I think the only way of uh, reversing the problems and disaster of Brexit is to rejoin the European Union. Uh, and associate membership, I, I think, can, can never be an answer to the problems generated by Brexit. As I suggested at the beginning, uh, part of the excitement about this is due to Starmer's uh, trip to the continent to The Hague and, and to meet President Macron in Paris. Uh, where do you think he is really on Europe now? I mean, is he changing his view towards the European Union? I think he may, may think he is, but uh, I'm not sure he's changing in any significant way. He's still got his red lines. He um, still um, repeats the mantra of there being, in, as he sees it, no case for rejoining the European Union or joining the single market, joining the customs union. Um, I think he has this idea um, that by warm words and smiles, um, that will be translatable into, into the hard coin of negotiating success with the European Union. I, I'm afraid it, it, it doesn't work that way. Uh, <laughs> ironically, um, he's then criticised by the, the Eurosceptic extremes um, of being somebody who wants to betray the United Kingdom back into the European Union. Um, it, it's curious that neither of those uh, extremes of hope or criticism uh, bear any relationship to reality. Uh, I agree that um, the fact that uh, the King was visiting France and uh, Starmer was visiting continental Europe um, gave extra legs to this story about the report. Um, but the, the report, as I said, is not about us. Um, we're so vain sometimes in this country, we probably think this report is about us. Well, it isn't true. Um, they're getting on with the governance of the European Union, and, and we are outside factors in that, but very small factors. Some pro-Europeans are interpreting uh, Starmer's strategy as being essentially to win the next general election at all costs, to get himself um, into government. Uh, and then in the course of uh, his term in government, shifting the debate in a significantly more pro-European direction so that he might be able, 
at the subsequent general election to actually put full rejoining uh, before the British people, um, or at any rate, initiating negotiations to do so before the British people. Uh, how do you see that? I think that's a, a pretty heroic assumption. Uh, I think he uh, rhetorically has um, painted himself into a, a number of corners. Um, he would have to swallow his words in a, a very spectacular way. I, I think it's extraordinary that uh, you can have people that you quote uh, who are hoping that um, uh, he will be taking the United Kingdom back into the into the European Union, um, who are saying that he will be winning, or they hope he will be winning, a general election on saying the absolute opposite of what they hope he's going to do. I think that's a very dysfunctional political system. And I doubt very much whether Starmer has that in mind. I think that Starmer is still in prey to the idea um, that if you talk nicely to the European Union, um, it will be possible to get substantial changes to the TCA, the Trade, Trade and Cooperation Agreement, which I, I, I simply think is, is, is fantasy. And I think he also has, as many... Um, rejoiners, too many rejoiners in this country have, the, the idea that we can edge ourselves back into the European Union, that we can align with this, we can be part of this program, we can cooperate with the European Union on that, and then eventually one day by a process of osmosis, uh, we'll wake up pretty well in the European Union anyway. I simply don't think it's going to work like that. Uh, we can only undo the harm of Brexit by rejoining the European Union, and we can only rejoin the European Union uh, if politicians, major politicians like Starmer, make out the case for it. Uh, it's uh, it's a it's a, a, a fair criticism uh, of, of too many of the pro-Europeans over the past um, 20 years that they haven't made their case as publicly and as vigorously as they ought to have done. And that's contrasted very unfavorably uh, with the vigorous prosecution of their case by people like like UKIP. So it may work out in the way that people people hope that you, you've cited, um, but it would be a, an irony if if it did, um, and it would be a need for show the need for for Starmer to up his game, like like the Skibbereen Eagle in the 1900s, keeping an eye on Tsar Nicholas. And the Federal Trust will be keeping an eye on Star Keir Starmer over the next five years, um, and we hope he replays our repays our, our critical interest with the, with action that we we hope to have from him. Brendan, many thanks for that. It's a very good note to end on. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that uh, video. It's one of a series and that you'll be following our future contributions on the same topic.